Something weird is happening on Mars. Something is changing the story of the red planet from a dried up dead desert rock to a world that could be more alive than any modern scientist may have imagined. The real truth about Mars is closer than ever, but who will be the one to find it? There was a time when the planet Mars was something very much like what we know on Earth today. It was rocky and wet, covered by rivers, lakes, and even small oceans of liquid water. And because of this, it's entirely possible that there was life on Mars just like the Earth. Water is known as the solvent of life, meaning that for biology as we know it to operate, there needs to be a liquid that can help carry molecules like oxygen and nutrients between the cells. That's what blood is doing in our own bodies. It transport molecules to the necessary locations. And it's because of this that everywhere on Earth that we find liquid water, we also find biological life of some sort. So the planet Mars also had this critical ingredient for life. But the problem is that somewhere around 3 billion years ago, the water disappeared. Or did it? We're pretty sure that Mars got a bit of a head start on the Earth in terms of evolution, meaning it cooled and solidified into rock faster than Earth. Mars is smaller and further away from the Sun. Also, the Earth likely had a collision event with another large body that produced our Moon and delayed the final formation of our planet, which didn't happen to Mars. What did happen on Mars was a mass exodus of the planet's atmosphere. Water can only exist in a liquid state when it's under some amount of pressure. The ambient pressure controls the boiling point, so in a high pressure environment like the inside of an instant pot or pressure cooker, water can get very hot without evaporating. That's how the food cooks so fast without getting dry. But in the opposite environment, at a very low pressure, water will simply vaporize and float away, even at cooler temperatures. So when Mars lost its atmosphere, for whatever reason, it lost all of the pressure that was holding the water in a liquid state, so the rivers and lakes simply evaporated and floated away into space, leaving behind only the water that was already frozen solid at the planet's north and south poles. Or at least, that's what we thought had happened up until about a week ago. Then, things started to get weird. This is NASA's InSight lander. It's one of the largely unsung heroes of Mars exploration. All of the glory tends to go to the rovers and the little helicopter drone, but it's the humble lander that just rewrote the book on Mars. InSight reached the surface of the red planet in 2018, touching down in a region known as Elysium Planitia. There was nothing special about this location other then it was chosen for the flat, smooth geography that presented the safest possible landing zone. Once the lander had been deployed, it used a robotic arm to lower two instruments onto the surface. The little black stand is a heat flow probe, and underneath the white dome is a seismometer, called Seismic Experiment for Interior Structure. The primary mission for InSight was to measure the vibrations produced by Marsquakes. Marsquakes are kind of like earthquakes in that it's a natural shaking of the planet's surface and interior caused by a sudden release of energy. On Earth, that release occurs along fault lines between tectonic plates, but on Mars, there are no tectonics. The entire surface is one continuous shell, so it seemed unlikely that Mars would experience frequent tremors, but in the year 1976, the seismometer onboard NASA's Viking 2 lander detected two separate events that appeared to be a lot like earthquakes. So 40 years later, InSight was sent to confirm the existence of Marsquakes. And that is exactly what it did. The little white dome on top of the seismometer protects it from any wind or thermal interference, making sure that everything it detects is coming from below the surface of Mars. It took nearly until the end of the lander's four-year mission for InSight to return a definitive answer. On May 4th, 2022, a large Marsquake estimated at a magnitude 5 on the Richter scale was detected by InSight's seismometer with vibrations that reverberated around the planet for up to six hours. The first thing that scientists did was to try and rule out a meteor impact. It's estimated that a crater of at least 300 meters diameter would have been left behind by anything big enough 
to create the seismic waves that InSight detected. Satellite images from the orbit of Mars were not able to find any corresponding impact event, so with a meteor impact ruled out, Mars quakes were officially confirmed. Now, even without a network of tectonic plates, there are a couple of natural factors that might explain Mars quakes. The crust of Mars is one continuous shell, but that doesn't mean it's consistent all the way around. There are thin and thick spots. There are unfathomably gigantic volcanoes that create heavy concentrations of mass on the surface, so there could easily be an imbalance of cracking and shifting of the crust materials at points where there is an imbalance of thin and thick rocks. This is probably what created the Grand Canyon on Mars, Ballas Marineris. Regardless of how the Mars quake was created, the resulting seismic waves that rippled through the surface and interior of the planet have revealed a hidden secret inside the Red Planet that has everyone involved wondering, what comes next? The seismometer instrument on InSight was able to measure the speed of vibrations as they traveled through the interior of Mars. And even though most subtle differences in motion can tell us a lot about the structure and composition of the planet, points where the waves slow down would indicate higher densities, like the presence of a liquid inside the rock. We do this all the time on Earth to locate underground fluids. Seismology can be used to find an exact location to dig a well or drill for oil. And this is exactly what it's just done on Mars. According to new analysis of the seismic data from InSight, Mars has an underground ocean of liquid water buried deep beneath the planet's surface. And not only does water exist under the surface of Mars, there is an incredible volume of it down there, enough to flood the entire planet with water up to one kilometer or half a mile in depth. Now, this is weird for Mars because we didn't expect to find any liquid water anywhere on that planet, but underground oceans may be more common on rocky worlds because we do have one on the Earth as well. Did you know that there's more water underneath the surface of the Earth than in all of the oceans combined? There's actually about three times more water below the ground than there is above it. Now, that doesn't mean that the Earth is hollow and there's a whole other world down there like what you may have seen in the Godzilla movies or one of many conspiracy theory videos on the subject. And the same goes for Mars. What we are talking about is porous rock that is saturated with liquid water. On Earth, we call this rock ringwoodite, and it's theorized that the water it contains was squeezed out of the rock itself by the intense heat and pressure of the Earth's mantle. Unfortunately for us, the Earth's underground reservoir is around 700 kilometers or 400 miles below the surface, so we're not getting there anytime soon. But on Mars, the underground ocean is much closer to the surface, about 10 to 20 kilometers or 6 to 12 miles. And that leaves some questions about how it got there. Just like on Earth, the water could have been formed underground in a natural process, and it may have been trapped down there for billions of years, dating back to the same era when Mars had liquid water on its surface. It's also possible that the water migrated from the surface to this underground reservoir. The cause for such an event remains mysterious, but if water did move down from the surface, then it may have taken the building blocks for life along with it. Even on Earth, we don't have any way to know if our underground ocean supports life, and we probably never will, not in my lifetime at least. The deepest hole ever drilled is known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole. It's in northern Russia, and it reached a depth of just over 12 kilometers, or about 6 miles underground, and we found some weird stuff down there. Scientists identified microscopic fossils of single-celled organisms as far down as 7 kilometers. They also found water at the same depth, and at the very bottom of the hole, the temperature rises to 180 degrees Celsius, or 356 Fahrenheit, making it too hot to continue drilling. So in theory, if we were to deploy the same drilling operation on Mars, then we would reach deep enough to find the underground reservoir. Of course, doing anything in space is exponentially harder than it is to do the same thing on Earth, and trying to do anything in a location as far away and inhospitable as Mars 
is about as high as you can possibly go on the difficulty scale. Even Elon Musk would struggle with anything as ambitious as drilling a giant hole on Mars, and the man already owns a tunnel boring company. But what we know right now is that Mars, previously believed to be a totally dead, dried up, frozen rock, is actually a lot weirder than we thought, and if anything, that should probably be a sign that we should be at least a little more optimistic and open-minded about the potential of our own solar system to surprise us in the most amazing ways.